Idology is excited to have Cree Harrison in the house today. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for being we here. We all watch these videos. <laughs> That's a little daunting. So the internet tells us, you know, mm -hmm. that you've been working towards a career in music for a long time. You know, we yeah. saw you as a little tot on Rosie O'Donnell. Um, we didn't see a lot of that on Idol or a little, a lot of discussion about, you know, that you've kind of really paid your dues and fought for this career. But tell me a little bit about how close you got mm. to the dream and how hard it is, you know, in this business. I mean, I played my whole life. I sing my whole life. Um, but whenever I was 10, my family uprooted in Nashville because I got a record deal. And um, yeah, that's pretty much where it started. And um, Rosie was a big thing for me because that was my first time on national television. And It'd be such an honor to sing on the Grand Ole Opry. The Grand Ole Opry. Yes, ma'am. I basically just tried to develop in Nashville as an artist, but I was such a baby that I didn't really know. Um, I knew more about what I didn't want than, ex than exactly what I wanted to be. Yeah, after you know tragedy and my family and, and whatnot, I think uh, I just had to take a break and try to figure out exactly how I wanted to, to grieve and, and deal with the industry because it's such a fast-paced uh, deal. So, I mean, I've learned so much from Nashville. I've lived there for 13 years, and uh, not just in the writing community, but just in the industry itself. Um, you have to learn to literally be yourself and nothing else because there's so many singers and writers there. You're, in, you're a needle in a haystack. Get familiar with the place, honey, because I think you'll okay. be singing there one day soon. So at what point did you say, I'm going to go the American Idol route? Had it been something you'd thought about for a few years or was this just like a recent epiphany? My sister actually said, you know, you should really think about trying out for Idol. And um, I mean, I never thought in a million years that I would do. For, for me, it was just a talent show. Um, and then once I realized that it was, a, you know, basically a platform for artists to start their career, right. and how many amazing things that it's done for Carrie and, you know, Jennifer Hudson and um, Melinda, like it's opened up so many doors uh, for artists, and I just it felt like the right thing to do at the time because I had nothing to lose. I wasn't signed, I wasn't with a publishing deal uh, or a label, so. I'm really glad that I did it. And you don't strike me as a reality TV no. competition personality. You know, no, you're I'm just not. a human being and, and a musician. So you get to group rounds in Hollywood Week, and we were yes. talking about it before we went on camera. It was a very funny, like, a lot of trumped up drama. I got like maybe an hour of sleep, and they didn't get anything. I think that kind of threw us off a little bit. Or writing up the arm, yeah. infighting people up till 5:20 in the morning, and you literally did not say a word during no. the whole package except for throwing a line of music to one one of the girls who forgot her line. That's all you right. said. Well, I've been I'm so wasting my oh time. Oh my God, I'm sick of wasting I need to go learn my words. I was very out of my element, but um, that being said, that's the challenge. You know, for, for me, I've, I've went through a lot of things in my life and uh, that's not the worst thing. So um, yeah, it was, it was definitely frustrating um, to be put in, in you know, a, a situation where I felt like there was you know, a lot of, uh, of drama happening, but um, we worked it out and we had fun either way, and um, they're really sweet girls. And so at the end of the day, it was just a, a fun experience that I'm glad that I made, made it through. You get to the next round and did Stars, and I think that's mm -hmm. where we really first saw you on TV, a moment of like, whoa, who's this? It of the mountainside. Hello, now. I actually heard that song about a week before I made it through to the next round, and I connected with it lyrically so well and uh, made me think of my mom. Stars that make me wonder where you are. I told my sister, um, I think this is going to be good for me to do, um, to not just show myself as a country artist, but um, that I can, you know, be worldly and, and take a, a pop song right. and still make it sound like Cree. I felt really good about it, and I was so happy that that was the first thing they showed, rather than highlighting <laughs> the group. <laughs> right. right. Oh God. It was a blessing in disguise. Did yeah. you Google yourself the next morning, like, to see what people were saying? Because I think there was a lot of buzz after Stars. No. No. <laughs> no. No, I do not Google myself. <laughs>
How did I Google myself? You get to Vegas week, and you didn't have a lot of preseason hype. We basically yeah, knew you from stars. Yeah, my audition wasn't even aired. Was there a lot of pressure, like, okay, I've got to make a real impact with Up to the Mountain to, to make yeah. sure I get through? And how did you come up with that particular song? I've always loved that song. Patty Griffin is one of my favorite singer-songwriters. Uh, I just thought it, it would be good. It would be a good song um, to connect with. I mean, it's got so much emotion and power. I see nothing. Each week I would literally just go, okay, what makes sense now? Um, I never thought ahead, because you, you just can't. You don't know if you're going to be there or not. You feel like a singer-songwriter more so than a country artist. The show loves to label people and be like, create country right. artists, but you picked from a lot of different genres. You picked some, yeah. some pop artists, some singer-songwriter, folk-type artists, some mm -hmm. blues artists, and I feel like all of those things inform what we saw over the course of the last, you know, three months. Right. I have so many different influences. Um, I mean, I grew up on Otis Redding, and I'm a country singer, but, um, yeah, I just, I feel like it's important to show different sides of yourself. I was kind of almost taking advantage of the fact that I could on this show. Yeah. Because when you put out a record, this is your record, and you, <laughs> right. this is just you. Um, but the fact that I could sing and read the song on Motown Week, and, um, you know, a, a pink song current week, like that's that's a that's a cool thing and uh, I took advantage of it more than more than anything. Top twenty women's round, you did stronger. You got a marriage proposal from Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. Well you already know that you're my wife. <laughs> and you sort of I, rolled with it. I love her. <laughs> I do. I like that she's um, not predictable and you never know what's gonna come out of her mouth or what she's gonna do. I mean, I'm just trying to do my wife proud. I roll with it because I think it's funny. I condone, <laughs> I condone the Nikki behavior. I think it's funny. Um, yes, we're engaged <laughs> so as a Vegas. <laughs> and look who's there. You come out of that round and you did a Susan Tedeschi song, mm -hmm. Evidence, which to me was one of my favorite moments of the season. Really? I was almost hoping you would reprise it for your oh, contestants' wow. reprisal. It makes me happy. It's a little risky to perform her on Idol. I don't think the average Idol viewer is really down with that. It was a selfish choice because I thought, if I'm going to make the top ten, I'm, I'm celebrating. I get to go on tour um, and thank all of these fans for getting me this far. I got enough to put you away. Susan Tedeschi's always been one of my favorites, and she's one that I would love to collaborate with, actually. And I thought, I love this song, and I'm going to just go out there and have fun with it. Do you think there's a shot for a collaboration? Has she tweeted you or so. added you? or Is my she on friends, Twitter? Yeah, my, is. my friends um, and I have a thread, and we all worship Tedeschi Trucks fan. <laughs> and uh, they showed that she followed me on Twitter, and I was like, I've made it. <laughs> I've made it. This is it. There's your like, confetti shower. <laughs> yeah, Let's go. that was it. <laughs> So top 10 week, I think, was one of your other great moments on the show was crying. Oh, um, thank you. And I liked that you picked something that maybe wasn't as iconic a Carrie performance, you know, yeah. I, I, that wasn't as closely associated with her and just did such a... It was a with me, though. You know, I, I love her version of that song and... Sorry, I interrupted you. No, but no, I, no. I love Roy Orbison. It's timeless. It's a timeless melody. I figured, why not bring that back? Take advantage of the fact that we can show this new audience stuff that's they may not know anymore. Our generation, good country music. One of the more awkward moments of the season, I think, was top eight duet week with Janelle, mm -hmm. when you guys did Like a Prayer, and basically the judges were all like. Creedom almost made it look like she flew in to do a duet with an idol contestant. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you looked a little bit like you were dying inside. Oh my God, please, why are we well, yeah, getting into this? this how weird is that? You don't want to be or compliment at the expense of someone else ever. Yeah. Especially me. <laughs> right. Um, so Janelle and I, we, we call each other, she calls me Patsy, I call her Dolly. There's room for both of us in country music. The beauty about both of us is that we're two totally different country artists. Yeah. And, um, you know, Nikki, she, she feels the way she does, and, and that's actually why I love her, because literally, whatever she's thinking, she'll say. So, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was a weird situation, but we're, we're too strong girls, so we got through it. I'll try and wrap it in five. Sure. No, no, no problem. Sorry. Top six week, I think, was my favorite week for you on the show. What the world needs now. Tell me a little bit about the acapella intro. Was that, was that scary? No, because I wanted to, you know, give something a little bit different um, with each performance, and I just felt like that one, it's such a sweet message, so just singing it out loud um, 
Acapulco was fun. <laughs> Is love sweet love? Help me make it through the night. I do wish I would have written that song. Uh, Chris Chris Jarverson is one of my biggest influences as far as songwriting goes. So it was, you know, it was, I was honored to do it. Let the devil take tomorrow. Mo Haggard tweeted me how great I did the song, and I was just like, first of all, <laughs> he tweets more than I do, and that's sad. <laughs> and then, second of all, he's like one of my biggest influences. I could not believe that he was even speaking to me. You started around that top five, top four week to get some feedback from the judges where they would be like, we need you to perform more, we need to see more mm -hmm. more yeah. passion in your face. I took it all as constructive criticism because you have to grow. You gotta like leave nothing on the table. You just can't, you know, be on cruise control. So I appreciated that they were not like, that was good. You know, rather than this is really how we feel and this is what you should do next week. I know you, you have a, a weakness for hip hop a little bit or a guilty pleasure I do. for that. Guilty pleasure. Did you ever consider <laughs> flipping a song like that into the country sphere? No. Because <laughs> we've seen That's it why done it's on my Idol. guilty pleasure. Okay. No. It's fun to, to dance and hang out with, with friends. Me and Amber will be doing some, some dancing on that bus, I'm sure. Did you ever consider doing one of your originals? I know what you've got on YouTube. You would have wanted it that way, which to me is thank incredible, so incredible for song. For even knowing that song, that makes me so happy. Well, wow. thank your fans because they, they'll tweet and be like, "Have you heard this?" And I, I wondered, oh. like, did you ever consider doing that one on the show? Because that—that's I did. Like, I always considered doing something I wrote, but um, I felt like there wasn't the opportunity was not appropriate for for me, um, and I, I don't regret it because now I get to save that stuff for the fans, you know, and. Um, yeah, I hope to record that song. I love that song. I'm so happy that people know of it. It's really, it's personal. It makes me happy that people like it. I've got two more questions because I know we're, they're tra trying to wrap us up here. Top four, take two, you did a Carrie Underwood song. Yeah. And when I saw you were doing a Carrie Underwood song that she'd sung on the show a few weeks prior, I was like, <gasps> like I know, why I would you, why did you do that from a strategic standpoint? But I think you really took the song in a completely different direction. My approach was just to make it sound like myself make it sound like Cree. Um, I, first of all, I love the lyric. Yeah. I think it's beautiful, and that was easy for me to connect with, for the obvious reasons. I will carry you with me. Yeah. I like having, you know, songs that have hope in them after such a, you know, tragedy and, and an emotion, so people can relate that you can move forward, and that message was really important to me, so it wasn't necessarily about big production. It was about how can I make this as intimate as possible? That way they're understanding that I mean every word. Same with my single, like I'm so proud of it and uh, I can't wait to sing it every night. <laughs> how did you feel when you first heard the single? Was it an immediate like, oh, this is it? Did you listen to a few yeah, different songs? I did, but there was just something about All Cried Out. I mean, the title alone is just kind of like the epitome of of you know who I am, I've had tragedy or whatever, but um, this is the sweet after the bitter, and you know to think that I can give people that hope. It's a choice to be happy. Fly. I'm Haley Steinfeld, and you're watching ENTV. Hi, my name is Kieran and Shipka, and you're watching ENTV. Aubrey Plaza, ENTV. I just touched it with my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>